Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about sensors in race cars and how they're strategically used to help win races. I was invited to come check out the engineering of the TE Connectivity and Dreddy Technologies test car. Sensor strategy really comes down to data acquisition, measuring all kinds of information on the car. Battery temperature, tire pressure, transmission oil pressure, remaining energy, throttle position, and so on. TE Connectivity supplies over 100 products and many of the sensors used in the Formula E car through their technical partnership with Andretti. Just as important as the build quality of these products is knowing what to do with the information the sensors provide. Live data is fairly limited in Formula E, however after each race engineers dive through all of the information each sensor provides. The decisions made using this information can easily mean the difference between finishing on or off the podium. Let's work through several of the sensors and talk about how each is used to influence racing strategy, starting with the accelerometer which TE supplies. This sensor measures acceleration on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. Obviously this can inform the engineer if the car is cornering as desired, but monitoring vertical axis acceleration is important as well. If significant acceleration forces are noticed in the vertical direction while cornering, braking, or accelerating, this could indicate the suspension is too stiff, reducing contact with the ground and thus reducing grip. Changes to the suspension stiffness, tire pressure, and even the wheel alignment can help cope with track conditions. Another thing you'll learn from the accelerometer, verifying what the driver is no doubt feeling, is if the car is bottoming out. The accelerometer will show spikes in the data, indicating that the vehicle's ride height is too low. For aerodynamic and handling purposes, you want the car as low as it can possibly be, but this of course must be balanced with the road conditions and suspension travel. The sensor also reinforces a safety aspect, so in the event of a significant collision, the sensor will detect the crash and immediately shut down the battery pack. This sensor functionality is required by the FIA to keep drivers and the track workers safe in case of an accident. Another critical item to measure is battery temperature, as it greatly impacts the performance of the vehicle. If battery temperature reaches about 55 degrees Celsius, the car's electric regeneration is limited, reducing efficiency and changing the brake bias. If the cell temperatures reach 62 degrees Celsius, the performance of the vehicle is automatically reduced. And finally, if the temperature reaches 68 degrees, the car stops. So what do you do if the battery temperature is getting too hot? The easiest solution is to of course use less throttle, but this could mean giving up your position. An alternative method is to reduce battery regeneration, which adds significant heat to the battery pack under braking, as it's using the electrical motors to put energy back into the battery to slow the vehicle down. By using the mechanical brakes, the heat can be displaced elsewhere, however this of course means you'll have less energy overall than your opponents. If there's enough juice in the battery and only a few laps remaining, it's a strategy that can pay off. If battery energy is low, however, sacrificing regen could mean running the battery dead. Battery temperature and the car's performance have to be carefully balanced in order for a team to have an advantage. Moving on to the transmission sensors, it's critical to ensure that not only the gearbox maintains proper oil pressure, but that the shifting mechanism also sees enough air pressure. If the transmission pressure is low, it could indicate a leak or lack of oil in the system. For gear changes, the pneumatic shifter mechanism should maintain enough pressure to last the full leg the car is out on the track. The air pressure gradually decreases as each shift occurs. If pressure were to drop to zero, the car would not be able to shift and would need to come into the pits for investigation. Another sensor TE supplies is the transmission temperature sensor. Ideally, Andretti wants to see the transmission temperature gradually increase during the race, never exceeding its maximum temperature. In the event that the transmission is overheating, this is often an indication for transmission failure. There could be a flaw within the oiling system design, though it is possible that swapping the transmission oil to another grade could fix the issue. The sensors TE develops aren't purely limited to the world of motorsport, as they have products reaching out to automotive OEMs, the energy and industrial sector, and even aerospace and defense. For anyone interested in learning more about the sensors and components that TE Connectivity develops, I've included a link in the video description. Of course, a huge thank you to TE for sponsoring this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.